Hello, this is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. In today's video, we are building these really cool acoustic fabric walls. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to frame them, how to insulate them, how to upholster them and trim them to leave you with a very nice professional final product that is both aesthetically pleasing and also works to acoustically eliminate a lot of the unwanted reflections in your mix position in your recording studio. So here is a sneak peek of the finished product and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step the entire process. So here we go. Here is what we are starting with. This is the client's drum slash control room where he does a lot of drum recording and recording of bands and other projects. So we are coming in to totally transform this space. Stay tuned for all of the videos we're gonna be doing in this space. We got lots of cool stuff coming. So very firstly, we are just going to get our flooring protection down just to make sure that we're not making a mess in the client's home here. Here is our lumber that we're using. We are using two by two by eight lumber to frame out these acoustic fabric walls. And this is going to be the new mix position. So this is where we're putting this acoustic fabric wall section. So I'm just measuring out to see how large I need to build my frames. There's the measurement for the largest frame on the front wall there. So I can go ahead and get my two by two lumber cut to size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my width pieces and my height pieces. Now my height pieces are gonna be a constant going around the room. We decided on 58 inches final height for the walls, which means when I subtract three inches of the height from both sides, I'm left with 55 inches as my final measurement to cut all of my vertical pieces at. And I'm just setting up my laser now to line it up with the bulkhead right there because I wanna make sure that the acoustic walls are nice and level across the room where there isn't a bulkhead. So I can just follow my laser there, right at the bottom of the bulkhead where the rest of the fabric walls are gonna go. So there is the first wall framed up and installed. I'm just using three inch construction screws to screw these in. Since this isn't structural, I'm only hitting a couple studs. It's not necessary to hit studs all the way around. And this is also double layer 5 8 drywall, so there's plenty of meat for me to screw into. You may wanna use shorter screws if you are only screwing in through one layer of drywall. So I'm just getting the rest of the frames built and I am making sure that I'm accounting for my trim. Right here you can see I left a half inch of a gap from the wall because I know I'm gonna use half inch thick trim to case the wall after it's fully upholstered. So I'm making sure that I'm making a half inch mark and you can see the other half inch mark there from the window sill. That way when we do our final trim, everything lines up nicely with the existing drywall. So I'm going ahead and getting my measurements for this section and we're just gonna build around this window opening. And I'm just setting up my laser here to make sure that I can get the height that I need to still give me that half inch gap from the windowsill and so that the bottoms of all my frames line up nicely. So the laser comes in super handy for that and same way right there, making sure I'm accounting for that half inch gap to account for the trim that is gonna go in at the very end of the build. So just getting my markings there, making sure I do that half inch gap as well, getting that tiny little frame in there. And then the last part is just this 45 degree section and just getting that screwed in. And once this is put in, then that is the framing for the acoustic fabric walls. So I use two by two lumber and the final dimension is, is one and a half inch uh, because I'm using Rockwool Comfort Board 80 as my acoustic insulation. Depending on where you are in North America or the world, your insulation choices may be different. Here in Canada, in Ontario, Rockwool is the most commonly available acoustic insulation that we get. Here is the Rockwool 80. This is a semi-rigid acoustic insulation. And I'm just using some drywall screws and some washers. Since these frames are larger than four feet tall, I'm just making sure I'm using a screw. And this isn't structural, this is just so that the, the insulation doesn't fold out into the fabric. Um, just putting a, a couple screws just to make sure that the insulation is secured and it's not gonna fall away from the wall. So I can just place all of those insulation in, I can cut it to size, and then the wall is insulated. This process goes by pretty quickly. Um, just using the knife to cut the rock wool to size and then using the screw and the washer, making sure that it's on there. Here is the stapler that I'm using to staple in the upholstery to the wooden frame. I'm using quarter inch staples and the client wanted to go with a orange and black color scheme for this front wall. So the large sections are all black. We're using a really nice heavyweight wool fabric and the 45 degree sections are gonna be in that burnt orange color. 
It's a really cool color scheme. It's actually based off of his dog, uh, which is really, really cool and um, really matches the tone. I got to meet that dog and it's, uh, it matches really well. It's really cool. So just stapling these to the frame, wanna make sure that we tension the fabric from corner to corner to make sure that the fabric lays nice and flat without any wrinkles. You don't have to over tension, but you just wanna make sure that the fabric is nice and taut and that it's laying flat. There is the trim that we're going to be trimming to cover all of the staple marks. And there's the nailer that I'm using. I'm using an 18 gauge nailer and I'm using inch and three quarter nails so that there's plenty of nail to uh, shoot into the frames there. So I'm just cutting this to size. This is just more of the tedious process. I'm putting 45 degree miters on these pieces anywhere it meets up with the 45 degree section. And I'm putting just a 90 degree butt joint anytime it meets up with a 90 degree section. So I'm just making sure that these are nice and straight following the walls. I just put in a little test or a little piece of fabric there to, uh, or a piece of trim there rather to account for my measurements for the vertical pieces. And now where it meets the 45 degree edges, I'm using my table saw to cut that 45 degree bevel onto the pieces of trim. That way when I nail these in, it's gonna meet up with those existing vertical pieces there nicely. So I'm just cutting off that back 45 degree so that I have a nice 45 degree angle to meet up with the trim piece, which you'll see in a second here. So those pieces meet up nicely with the flat sections and just nailing them right into the frame. So there you can see the close up detail of how that bevel allows the piece of trim to sit nice and flush and flat up against that existing piece of vertical trim. And now for these sections here where it overhangs, where it meets the wall, we're just gonna case this so that it meets up with the wall nicely. So I'm just putting my piece of trim in there, scribing it with my pencil so I can transfer that over to the table saw. And you can see I just cut off that little excess so that it sits into uh, right up against the wall, nice and flat, and I can nail that into place. Same thing with this little section here. And there's just a couple more sections where the frame is exposed, where it meets the wall. So I wanna make sure that I cut and make sure that those pieces of trim meet up nicely as close as possible and then the rest of the small gaps are just going to get siliconed with white silicone at the very end which you'll see in a moment so there's all the trim put up on these walls now we are ready for wood filler and to do all the prep for paint so there's the wood filler i'm using you could use one that isn't tinted red that's just what i had in the toolbox from previous jobs um, so i'm just putting it on with my finger there it's really really simple this stuff just uh, just goes into all of the nail holes and then once it's dry, then you can just hit it with the sandpaper, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then it's ready for paint. So I'm just going around the whole acoustic wall section here, getting all of the nail holes wood filled and going around with my sander. I'm just using a um, 120 grit uh, sanding block, making sure that I tape around the walls and on the fabric just so that when I'm rolling on my paint, I'm minimizing the risk of getting any sort of paint on the fabric or on the walls. There's the sanding blocks I'm using. I, I used a coarser one and a finer grit one just to get everything ready for, for paint. And just going ahead, getting everything sanded. Here's the roller I'm using. I like using foam rollers when I'm painting trim because it leaves a nice consistent texture um, as opposed to the brush. There is the paint that I'm using. I'm using an actual doors and trim based paint that's an, an enamel base. So it's nice and durable and um, it's not gonna peel off um, or get abrased very easily. So just going ahead, we ended up doing three coats total and allowing time to dry in between coats just to make sure that uh, everything adheres properly. And once all of the paint is dry, I can go ahead and peel the tape. But just going ahead, taking my time, this is the spot and the time to be super patient. You do not want to get any paint on this fabric. If you are clumsy and this is maybe your first time doing it, you might wanna just cover the fabric in plastic um, here is the silicone. This is just to close up the joints anywhere right there where like the trim is meeting the wall, uh, just to give us a really nice professional final, final edge there. And I'm doing that trick of taping up the gaps and just leaving myself like an eighth of an inch where I can place the silicone. I can smooth it out with my finger and then remove the tape. It leaves just like the perfect finish on the silicone. Um, that way you're not smearing silicone all over either the wall section or on the painted trim section. And I'm doing that for the vertical segments of the 45 degree trim as well, just to make sure that there are no visible gaps or seams. And that is the final look, final product. Turned out so awesome. The client is ecstatic about how the build is going so far. 
Stay tuned for more. We got a lot of cool stuff. We have windowsill base traps to fill in those deep windowsills and block them out. We've got freestanding baffles that we're gonna be building. We got mixed position cloud. We got a whole bunch of really cool stuff going on in this build. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Peace out.